let us spend a little bit of time in prayer. Jesus, thank you that you created us. Thank you that you didn't leave us to our own condition, that you came and you lived with us and you lived for us. And as Smiley speaks, whether we've heard this a hundred times or whether we're going to hear this for the first time, Holy Spirit would ask that you would open our eyes and ears and hearts, that we would receive this good news with great joy. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thanks, Strider. Now, I need your help, okay? You, you ready to help me? Knock, knock. Yeah. That was pretty good. One more time. Knock, knock. Yeah. Mary. Merry Christmas. Okay, we'll move on, okay. Did you hear the kids? They said, it's time, it's time. And it is time, it's, it's Christmas time, and uh, what we're here to celebrate is that Jesus has come. On nights like this, I'm so thankful to be a Christian because we have the best holidays, don't we? I mean, we have Christmas where we celebrate that God became a man and lived among us. How amazing is that? And then we have Easter, and at Easter, we celebrate how a dead man got up and walked out of the tomb and said, we could too. Um, that's what we're going to be looking at this evening. Uh, we're going to read the, I even said this evening, at the last service I said this morning, Occupational Hazard. But we're going to read the Christmas story from a different place, from the book of Galatians, chapter 4. And I'm going to read verses 4 through 7. But when the fullness of the time came, at just the right time, like the kids said, it's time, at just the right time, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that He might uh, redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive adoption as sons. Because you were sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir through God. The message this evening is called Too Good uh, to be True. Too good to be true because I think many of us were raised and we were taught that if you hear something and it sounds too good to be true, then it's probably too good to be true. And, and generally, that's pretty reliable, isn't it? I mean, if I told you that if you cheer for my beloved Florida Gators, your heart will never be broken, <laughs> you'll know that's not true, right? Because your heart will be broken over and over again. Or... If I told you I've got a Rolex watch and I'll sell it to you for $50, you know what, that, that's too good to be true, right? Um, but just because it's generally true doesn't mean it's always true. Because what we're going to learn tonight with Christmas, listen, it's too good and true. Matter of fact, the point of tonight's or this evening's message is Jesus is too good and true. Matter of fact, that's what gospel means. Did you know that gospel means good news? It's good, it's too good, and it's news that really happened. It's about a real person who lived and died and rose again. So, so let's start to unpack that, that Jesus is too good and true. <clears throat> In Galatians 4, verse 4, But when the fullness of the time came... At just the right time, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that He might redeem those who were under the law. The good news is that Jesus paid our debt. Now, if I told you that someone had paid your debt, how would you respond? You would say, well, it depends. It depends on what? On how much we owed, how big the debt was, and the other is our own ability to pay it, Right? I mean, if you had a parking ticket, it's hard to find a parking place in St. Augustine, isn't it? So you park somewhere and you had a parking ticket and it was $50 and someone paid your parking ticket, you'd be thankful, right? I mean, you could have paid it yourself, but it was nice of them to pay it. You might even send them a card. But what if the IRS came after you because you hadn't paid your taxes for 10 years? And your debt was tens of millions of dollars with all the interest. And there was no way, no matter how hard you worked, you could ever repay that debt. Then you would think, man, this is too good to be true that someone would pay my debt, that huge debt. And listen, the message of Christmas is we had a debt so large we could never repay it. And someone whose name is Jesus stepped forward and paid the debt. 
And that's why Jesus is too good and too true. Uh, listen, here's the bad news, that we have a debt we cannot pay. In, in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, will you read this verse with me? For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, who does the Bible say is sin? All of us. And that would be me and you, all of us. So we've all sinned. And what is sin? Sin is a crime against God. It's where we break God's rules and God's heart by disobeying God. And the Bible says that, that we've all sinned. And most of us think, well, I'm sure I've, got, I've done one or two things wrong, but, but I'm really not a sinner. So in Galatians, a few verses before what I've read you, in Galatians 3, verse 24, notice what it says, therefore the law has become our tutor to lead us to Christ. The reason God gave us the Ten Commandments was so that we would see how often we sin so that we would realize we have a debt we can't pay, so we'd be thrilled to hear that Jesus paid our debt. Therefore the law has become our tutor to lead us to Christ so that we may be justified by faith. So I'm going to walk you through just a few of the Ten Commandments. I could walk through them all, but a few will do. The first commandment uh, is, you shall have no other gods before me. So my question to you is, have you ever made a decision in your life without putting God first? Anybody ever done that? That, that you did what you wanted to do rather than what God wanted you to do? Okay, we're 0 for 1, okay. Uh, how about the fifth commandment? You know what the fifth commandment is? Honor your father and mother. Uh, growing up, growing up, did you ever disobey your parents, ever do something you weren't supposed to? Uh, is that, I mean, I'm guilty. How about, how about you? Okay, we're 0 for 2. You know what the ninth commandment is? The ninth commandment is you shall not bear false witness. In your whole lie, have you ever told a lie? If you say no, guess what? <laughs> you just did, right? You ever exaggerated? Yeah. So, so listen, we... We've broken the ninth commandment. We're 0 for 3. But I know some of you are saying, but wait, wait, I know there's one commandment I've kept. There's one commandment I've kept. What, which one, right? You shall not murder, right? And you're saying, are you pretty confident you've not kept that? I mean, you've kept that, right? You confident? But, but let me show you what Jesus said about that commandment. In Matthew 5, verse 21, and this is Jesus speaking, Notice what he says, you have heard that the ancients were told you shall not commit murder, and whoever commits murder shall be liable to the court. Uh, and I think most of us, when we hear about a murderer, say that person has done something terrible, they should be punished. <clears throat> but notice what Jesus says, but I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court. Have you ever been angry with someone without cause, maybe your spouse? or your children, or your parents, or your neighbor, or maybe even your pastor. Jesus says that if we're angry without cause, we've broken the sixth commandment. So, and, and it gets even better. Listen to this. Um, uh, you go, but I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court, and whoever says to his brother, you good for nothing, shall be guilty before the Supreme Court, and whoever says, you fool, shall be guilty enough to go into the fiery hell. How many of you drive? <laughs> I mean, come on, have you, ever, have you ever yelled at another drive? You said, you idiot, you fool. And what did Jesus say? That if we've done that, we've broken the, the sixth commandment. If I went through the commandments one by one, you would find that you're like me, that we are ophers. We are o for 10 every day of our life. And that's why God gave us the law so that we would understand how big our debt is and our inability to pay it ourselves. That's what he's saying in Galatians 4. When he says, but, the fullness, but when the fullness of the time came, God sent forth the Son, born of a woman, born under the law, uh, so that he might redeem those who were under the law. It's though the as though the law were a 300-pound weight, and we're underneath that. We're underneath that, and, and we, can't, we can't get out of it because we're under the law. Um, and, and I want you to know that we've all sinned against God. We're in big trouble. And uh, to help you understand that a little bit more, in Romans 6, verse 23, we read, For the wages of sin is death. See the word sin? We've all sinned. And wage means if God gave us what we deserve, a just God, it would be death. And death is not simply physical death. 
uh, when our bodies and spirits are separated, but it's eternal death where we're separated from God and from all good things, uh, and that's what hell is. And you're saying, but Smiley, it's Christmas Eve. Why, why such a downer? Remember what I said earlier? If you heard someone paid your debt, our response would depend upon what? The size of our debt and the inability of us to pay it. And once we understand that we have sinned against God, we have a debt, what we deserve is death, and we can't do anything about ourselves, then we hear someone stepped forward and paid our debt, and his name is Jesus. You see the verse, for the wages of sin is death? That's the bad news. But here comes the good news, but. I love to tell people there's good buts and bad buts. This is a great but. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. When we had a debt, we could not pay. Jesus stepped forward and paid our debt. That's why Jesus is too good and true. Back to Galatians 4. But when the fullness of the time came, at just the right time, God sent forth His Son, we believe there is one true God, but He exists eternally in three persons. There's God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Spirit. So God the Father sent God the Son. Notice, born of a woman. Jesus is fully God and fully man. He had an earthly mother, Mary, but He didn't have an earthly father. He was conceived in her womb by the power of the Holy Spirit, a unique person, fully God and fully man, because he came into the world on a unique mission. Wow. So what we celebrate at Christmas is just like the kids said, that the Creator came to earth, and he was born uh, as a baby. And why did he come into the world? He was born a woman, uh, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who were under the law. He came to pay our debt, a debt we had and couldn't pay ourselves. You remember when the angel appeared to the shepherd? Remember when the angel appeared to the shepherds in Luke 2? But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there's been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Do you know who hear that and are filled with great joy? Do you know who? People who realize what? that they have a problem called sin, that they have a debt they cannot pay, and they cannot save themselves. And then, when we understand our sin, then we hear that someone came to pay our debt. Then it's good news of great joy. It is for me. Is it for you? And you remember, you remember that Mary and Joseph were engaged, right? And <laughs> you ever wonder what that moment was like that Joseph discovers that Mary's pregnant and he knows he's not the father? And uh, <clears throat> she says, yes, it's like you think I'm pregnant, but it's not what you think. This is, this is really of the Holy Spirit. Y you think Joseph bought that, do you? And the gospel writer said, what, that Joseph didn't believe that, and he was going to break off their engagement, and then an angel appeared to him in a dream. And in Matthew 1, we read this. <clears throat> She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sons. Uh, we had a debt we could not pay. God the Son put on flesh, came to earth to pay our debt. Jesus was born to save his people, to save us from our sins. And so that baby, fully God, fully man, lived a perfect life for 33 years, and, and then he was placed on a cross. He was placed on a cross. Back to Romans 6, 23. Let me show you what happened on the cross. For the wages of sin is death. What we deserve was death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus is fully God and fully man. As a man, he could die in our place as our substitute. As God, his death would be of infinite value. So Jesus took our sins and he took the wages of sin. He died in our place once and for all. He cried out from the cross, it is finished, which meant paid in full. He said, I've paid in full the penalty for your sins. And then he was buried. But the third day he walked out of the grave. Listen, death is the penalty for sin. And having paid the penalty for sin in full, he walks out of the grave proving he had conquered sin and death so he could offer to us the greatest gift ever given, the free gift of eternal life. And... Um, as we hear about a free gift called eternal life, I mean, don't we want to live forever? 
it raises two questions, doesn't it? And the first question is, what is eternal life? What is eternal life? And secondly, how do we get it? Uh, if it were possible to live forever, I think we want to ask, well, what is eternal life and, and how do we get it? And to help us to understand that a little bit more, we can look at John 3.16. If we put these two verses together, because they both talk about eternal life, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. God saw we were trapped in our sins and could do nothing, so He sent His Son to pay our debt. He lived and died and rose. Why? That whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Uh, I want you to see that eternal life is given to us the moment we believe in Jesus. So what is eternal life? It's the forgiveness of our sins. Have you ever done anything wrong? Are you ever haunted by what you've done? Boy, I sure am. And what Jesus offers us, that if we believe in Him, we're forgiven of all of our sins, past and present and future. And what would you pay to be forgiven? What if I told you someone paid it for you and you could have it for free? Wouldn't you want to be forgiven? What is eternal life? It's the opportunity to do life with Jesus. Uh, to have a friend who, when he moves in, he never leaves, to have a purpose big enough in our life to give our lives to. We get to do life with Jesus, having a, a friend and a purpose. What is eternal life? It's the opportunity not only to be forgiven and to do life with Jesus, but to do eternity with Jesus. Did you know that people are forever? We're all forever. It's either going to be eternal life or it's going to be eternal punishment. It's either going to be heaven or hell. And Jesus offers us the opportunity to be forgiven, to do life with Him, and then to spend all of eternity with Him. That's what eternal life is. It's to be forgiven and to do life in eternity with Jesus. And how do we get it? How do we get this free gift? We're told here, whoever believes in Him. Let me ask you, what's your plan to go to heaven? Are you, do you believe in yourself that, man, I'm such a good person, He's going to let me in? Is that your plan? Or do you believe in Jesus? You know why I'm a Christian? It's my only chance. Religion says, religion says you have to be good to go to heaven. I don't stand a chance with religion because I'm not good. Are you? But Jesus offers those that are not good, those that, that admit they're sinners and put their trust in Him. He offers sinners eternal life. That's my only hope. And yours too. What does it mean to believe in Jesus? Uh, we love to say it's as simple as ABC where we admit and believe and commit. It starts when we admit, Jesus, I didn't honor my father and mother, and I haven't put you first in all my decisions. And man... I've told lies and exaggerated, and, and, and I've gotten angry with people. I, I've called people by name. I've sinned. Have you? And then, believe, Jesus, I believe what we're here, that you became a man and died and rose for me. And then we commit. That is, we trust Jesus as our Savior and Lord, that instead of trusting in ourselves, we say, Jesus, move in and forgive me and give me eternal life. And, and to say, Jesus, I, I want you to be Lord of my life and help me be the person you want me to be. You see, this Christmas, all of us have a choice. We have a choice, and it kind of reminds me of Garfield. I, I like Garfield. You see, Garfield's here, and he says, someday I'll get what I deserve. Do you ever think about that? I mean, do you think about that you'll stand before God one day, and let me ask you, do you really want what you deserve? Because you can have it if you want. But then Garfield has a second thought, and he says, wait, I want something way better than that. Because that's really our choice. Our choice is we can get what we deserve, and the Bible says what? That the wages of sin is death. Or we can get something way, way better. We can get a free gift of eternal life in Jesus. That's our choice. Um, I'll never forget when, when I first understood that, when the Holy Spirit opened my eyes, and, and I understood I had a choice. I could get what I deserve, which was the wages of sin is death, or I could get what I didn't deserve, the free gift of God, which is eternal life in Jesus. Listen, that's the most no-brainer of any decision I've ever made. And so I admitted I was a sinner, and I believed in Christ, and I committed myself to Him as Savior and Lord. And you know what? That was the best decision ever, and it's the best Christmas gift ever, and it gets better and better every day. You know why Jesus is more and more precious to me every day? Because every night when I go to bed at night, I am overwhelmed by my failures. Anybody else in here overwhelmed? My failures as a husband, as a father, as a grandfather, as a pastor, I fail so much. Anybody else? 
And listen, the older I get, the more I fail and the more precious Jesus is to me to know that he died and rose and because I trust in him, I'm forgiven of all my sins, past and present and future. Wouldn't you like to be able to go to bed at night knowing you're forgiven? Listen, Jesus is precious to me when I go to bed, but when I wake up in the morning, Jesus is precious too because he's a friend. And you know what? I get to have breakfast with him every day. And you know what he promised me? He said, Smiley, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. Don't we all want a friend like that? Don't we? I mean, the older I get, the more I disappoint people. And people who once were my friends, they don't like me anymore. But I have one friend who for over 50 years says, I'm never leaving. I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. What would you pay to have a friend that no matter what you do, he says he's never living? And not only do I get to get up and have breakfast with a friend, but Jesus says, Smiley, I have a purpose for your life big enough to give your life to. So every day I get to get up and have a friend who never leaves and a purpose big enough to give my life to. Um, So Jesus is more and more precious every day that I'm forgiven. I get to do life with him and eternity with him. Every day I hear about someone dying. Anybody else hear about that? We always hear about someone dying, and when I do that, I'm reminded that I'm going to die too, and how precious it is to know Jesus and know that when I die, I'm going to go and be with him. Uh, I'm old. A lot of you are young. I try and avoid mirrors, but sometimes I look in the mirror and say, man, you are so old, and every day I'm one day closer to my death, and listen, you are too. And Jesus becomes more and more impressive to me because I'm reminded we're all going to die. And when I die, I know I'm going to go and be with him. Do you? Listen, I want you to know that I'm a pastor and I do funerals all the time. Old people, young people, husbands, fathers, parents, children. And every time I do a funeral, Jesus becomes a little bit more precious to me, a little bit more precious to me because I'm reminded we're all going to die. We're all going to die. And I am so thankful that I have eternal life and know that when I die, I'm going to be with Jesus forever. Don't you want that assurance? And you say, but Smiley, how do you know? You know how I know? Because one day, a dead man got up and walked out of the tomb and said, we could too. I have put my faith in the one who died and rose for me. Have you? Oh, listen, the message of Christmas of Jesus is too good and it's true. It's too good and true. We really can be forgiven. We really can do life with Jesus. We really can live forever. It is the greatest gift ever, and I really believe the question that Jesus would be asking you tonight is, would you like to receive this gift, would you? And if you would, here's what he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The way you can have that gift is to believe in Jesus, is to admit you're a sinner, and to to believe in Jesus and then commit to him as Savior and Lord. And listen, if you'd like to do that, if you'd like this gift, I'm going to close this in prayer, and we can both tell Jesus what you just told me, okay? But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lead us in a prayer where we can both tell Jesus you'd like this gift, and and after I lead us in this prayer, I'm going to ask you that if you've prayed that prayer for the first time, if you'd raise your hand, don't be embarrassed. Nobody's going to peek. Nobody's going to, and even if they do, it'll be the most important decision you ever make, And I think it's very helpful when we make a response and say, yes, today's the day I put my faith in Christ. And then you'll remember that for the rest of your life, okay? So I'm going to pray, ask you to follow me, and then then if you put your trust to raise your hand, and I'll pray for you. Keep your hand up so that I can pray for you. And then after that, I'll pray for all of you, and then I'll say amen. Let's pray. Jesus, we've all messed up, especially me. We all have a debt we cannot pay. And we're here today because you left heaven to come to earth and pay our debt. Thank you. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. And and thank you for rising. And and thank you for offering us the greatest gift ever, eternal life, forgiveness, and a chance to do life and eternity with you. And if you've come to understand that eternal life is a free gift and you'd like this gift, I want you to know that Jesus is here. He's far more concerned with the attitude of our hearts than the words that we say, but 
I would just ask you where you are. Won't you just repeat after me as we tell Jesus you'd like this gift? Lord Jesus, I admit to you that I have sinned against you in many ways. I believe you died on the cross for my sins and rose. And I want you to come into my life and, and be my Savior and forgive me and give me eternal life. I want you to be Lord of my life and help me be the person you want me to be. Oh, well, if you've done that for the first time, won't you just raise your hand and say, today's the, the, the day that I put my trust in Christ. Won't you, won't you raise your hand? Just leave it up. Leave it up and let, let me pray for you. Jesus, I thank you for those here and online who've put their trust in you. Lord, I pray that they would know that eternal life is a gift and when we believe you do forgive and we get to do life and eternity with you. Thank you for doing that. If you would mark that on your card, we'd, we'd love to celebrate with you. Jesus, I pray that none of us would leave here this evening without receiving the greatest gift ever given, that you offer us eternal life and that we would have that gift and we would leave rejoicing that you've come, that you've risen, and that we're forgiven, that we get to do life with you, that we have a friend and a purpose. Lord, that we get to live our whole life knowing the best is yet to come, the best is yet to come, that we are going to enjoy you not only every day of our lives, but for all of eternity. Thank you, Jesus. And we pray in your name. Amen.